Whenever I talk, uh, I always talk completely informal. Uh, and I think complete informality is a very fit my broken English. <laughs> so that's much better. So at the beginning, uh, when I present, you see the, some souvenir or gift, some mistake. <laughs> I enjoy that. We, you see, too much formality. Even, you see, the difficult to breathing, that kind of sort of formality I don't like. We are like human beings, same human beings. Mentally, emotionally, physically. Uh, and wherever I go, I always feel like that. We are same human beings. Making differences. Consider some people are some important, some are not important. That's just our own mental creation. Basically, we are the same. If we talk, or oh, I said the contact, on basics of the same basic level as a human being, then there's hardly no cause for problem, for trouble. Respect each other. Showing each other as a human brothers, sisters. Their suffering is our suffering. Their happiness is our happiness. That's the reality. So, in any way, now I'm very, very happy. A great honor is to come to this uh, important sort of conference. Uh, and also, uh, me personally, now last, uh, now I think 52 years, almost 52 years, uh, live in Dhamsala. So this is uh, part of my own sort of area. So I'm great honor. And then, and then also, last 53 years, or 52 years, 51, I'm mean one year in Mussoorie. Then 1960 on, right, 60 on, uh, I live at Dhamsala. So, uh, five decades, yeah. five decades. Five decades. Huh? There's a lot of development in this area. When I came first time, Dharmasala, Meglogenj, uh, I think only two shops, one Neroji, uh, another Kasab, I mean, Shingibe, Ka, Budram, Budram. <laughs> uh, how a lot of sort of, uh, or say the restaurant, a uh, lot of sort of hotels also now coming. And the important is the education sort of the center. And here, particularly the medical, it is very important. Everybody is concerned about their health. If health, some problem, and even mental function also may not carry properly. Uh, so physical health is very, very important. Uh, so, so your sort of job, your duty, taking care about health. So really, uh, very important, not only just a very important sort of work, but also I think a great sort of, sort of way to serve other people. The medical sort of service with warm-heartedness, with sense of sort of responsibility, sense of concern. Then your profession, your work, also one of the best spiritual sort of practice, helping others. Cure their sort of the problems, their pains. And in some cases, almost give them new life. So wonderful work. 
So in Tibet, we usually say some doctor, a physician, uh, or such such physician. Uh, knowledge is concerned, very good, but heart not that warm. So therefore, his or her medicine may not be much effective. <laughs> that those people, those doctors or physicians, they may not be very high top quality, but very warm hearted, very warm hearted sort of person. So their medicine is more effective. So the, your profession, right? Uh, very important. At the same time, genuine sense of concern of patients' well-being. Right. It's extremely important. My own experience, uh, when I sort of get some sort of medical sort of treatment uh, in the hospital, and when the doctor uh, shows human feeling, some smiles, some real sort of warm feeling, then I, as a patient, feel very happy. Ah, he or she must take uh, uh, fully, right, right, must take full care. If doctor or nurses come and go without smile, treated you almost like machine. <laughs> then sometimes <laughs> patient may feel, I, I also sometimes feel, oh, that person may carry some experiment on me. <laughs> so, so they, I think even the, uh, curing, uh, curing illness, I think the patient's spirit is very important. High spirit, full of hope, trust to physicians or nurses. Uh, even recovery, I think much, much faster. So human mind is a very, very important sort of element. So that I, I want to tell you. Then, of course, uh, India. Uh, most populated democratic country. Uh, with a long history, this country four, five thousand year old sort of recently history. And the cultural aspect and the philosophical aspect, this country, I think the most advanced sort of uh, uh, country or area. So thousand year old India's the concept of ahimsa and religious harmony. Now, when we look different part of the world, a lot of violence, a lot of injustice. Uh, and many areas, you see, uh, do not take sort of serious concern about others' life. Then, and also, you see, the conflict in the name of religion. When we saw these things, then India's thousand-year-old tradition of non-violence. Non-violence means respect others' sort of right, respect others' life. From that, non-violence idea come. Right. Uh, not harming others. Because you must respect. They also same like us. So the ahimsa, thousand year old India's tradition ahimsa, is very much relevant to today's world. And then other field, religious harmony. Again, with different sort of religious tradition, sometimes fighting, killing. Even days, even these days, now it happens. How in India? Of course, some pockets, pockets here and there. Some problem due to these sort of differences. That's understandable. Over a billion population, some mischievous people. That's 
war is happening. But overall, India, thousand years, I think more than two thousand, three thousand years, uh, they decide homegrown religions. That's, I think, earliest sort of Indian sort of religion, Sangya philosophy, Sangya sort of tradition. And then from that, different sort of the non-Buddhist traditions, ancient times, then Buddhism, uh, then Jainism, and then later, of course, Sikhism. I think very clear, the Sikhism itself, very much non-sectarian sort of principle. The Guru Nanak himself, I said, I thought, I the pilgrimage, 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 Made pilgrimage to Mecca. So that's the uh, India's culture. Respect all the religious tradition. But because of that, they eventually Zoroastrian came, settled this country. Now these days, the Parsi community very small in Bombay, very small, less than hundred thousand. But no fear. Very happily sort of live there. And then all these, uh, uh, then of course Christianity, uh, Islam, Judaism, all these different religions from outside India eventually come here. So the India's, uh, the tradition of religious harmony is really a wonderful thing. It's very relevant to this world. Now you, Indian brothers, sisters, you should feel proud, proud. So you have very long history, very rich cultural heritage. Uh, and then in modern time, India, since 47, India become independence. Uh, democracy in this country deeply rooted, in spite of some sort of problems. The basic sort of democratic system, very, very stable. During emergency, during uh, Indira Gadiji, uh, uh, some people, you see, they, uh, at that time, you see, they, a little sort of, sort of see, they, anxiety, but after election, and the transfer rate. Because of the change of government, very smoothly. Maharaj come, no problem. Very, very smooth. That's the sign of democracy deeply rooted in this country. Compare neighboring state. Very stable. So you should feel proud. Meantime, in technological field, modern, I think the British imperialists introduced education, I think the, the modern education, I think quite good. That's a good thing. On that ground, that ground, right, that, that basis or that ground, the India's Indian sort of knowledge in science, knowledge in sort of technology, there is quite sort of high. I, uh, sometimes I usually, uh, my talk, as I mentioned, very sort of completely sort of informal. Uh, so uh, I may again repeat here. Sometimes, uh, I think because of hot climate, sometimes a little bit sort of laziness, if may I say so. Which better also is quite lazy. <laughs> The, uh, one time you say, I express that way. You say, later, you say, some people, I think, I think, uh, this reporter, I, th I think you mentioned, I think, uh, that is my sort of word. You say, a little bit laziness. Uh, you say, that, kasura, kasura, uncomfortable in the Indian eye, right, Indian ear. Uh, uh, so then later, look, the kasa, Commonwealth game. <laughs> A lot of sort of uh, the problems, you see, happen. 
because of carelessness, Kasati, complacency, yes, complacency. Uh, so here, please, now you, many of you, looks very young. So now, rich tradition, uh, sort of rich philosophy, as a backbone. Now with strong backbone, now your hand now must be very active, right? must build this country. Uh, and now there are some nations now competing with India. So, so you must sort of work hard with full self-confidence. You have plenty of reasons to develop self-confidence and proud courage. That I want to tell you. Uh, then, uh, these days, uh, basically, I consider myself as a messenger of Indian spirit or Indian thought. Wherever I go, I always talk ahimsa, British harmony. That's Indian tradition. So, I'm really acting like a messenger of Indian thought. Then, last 53 years, I live in this country. So, major portion of my age, from 25, now uh, nearly 77, I spent, I live in this country. So, one. One time, I think a few years ago, one Chinese reporter, some group of Chinese reporter, mainly from overseas Chinese, one Chinese reporter asked me, why you are mentioning uh, you consider yourself as a son of India? I think they felt this is political sort of, sort of reason. And I told, my brain, every particle, of my brain, filled by knowledge of thought. Since my childhood, say, you see, six, seven years old, I already start learning, mainly at that time, learning by heart. Those uh, Buddhist philosophical sort of text in Sanskrit, later it was translated into Tibetan. So we like other sort of stu student, I start learning this by heart. Then, of course, later, different commentary, including Tibetan writing, uh, so all my life study through that way. Still, uh, I consider myself as a student of Buddhist philosophy. I still still learning. So my brain. Every part of my brain filled by modern thought. That's Indian thought. Then my physical, at that time, about 50 years uh, already. Uh, so I told, last 50 years, this physical survived by Indian dals, Indian rice, Indian chapati. <laughs> so I describe myself, I consider myself as a son of India. That's the reason. Uh, nothing else. That the Chinese reporter seems to understand, see some reasons, <laughs> not just the mere political sort of statement or something. Uh, so as a son of India, uh, I really uh, feel some serious concern about corruption. Last year, uh, when I visit Rajasthan, Jodhpur, yeah, Jodhpur, as usually you see my talk, some student, uh, one student uh, a question, put one question to me. He's still studying. But later, when his real life starts, Unless follow corruption, uh, see, there's no way to survive. Right? 
to, to succeed? And that, that kind of question to ask me. I was surprised. A student. Even such a young person's mind, corruption is almost like way of life. Without that, you cannot, you cannot survive or you cannot succeed. Then within a few days, I was in Bombay. One of my friend, one businessman, uh, one cash talk. He also mentioned, as a businessman, without corruption, you cannot succeed your business work. So these two was the occasion where I really felt uh, that's very serious. Some other country uh, who have not much sort of concern about moral principle, then corruption, understandable. But here, this country, generally speaking, very, very religious minded nation. I think almost, I think every Indian worship Shivaji. Krishna, uh, and Ganesh, or Saraswati, so on, and Buddha. Sometimes I teasing, teasing my Indian friend, say they in the front in the front of some uh, god statue, uh, some incense and some flower, and recite some shloka, Sanskrit shloka but without knowing the meaning. <laughs> but that's the tradition. Every, I think, him, every Indian family, I think, do that, some kind of puja. So if you really believe God, really believe Buddha or Shivaji, you must follow their sort of, their path, right? their path or their guidance. I think no god, no goddess, no Buddha, Buddhisattva, say, uh, uh, so, uh, you should lead Sora uh, Varsade. And including corruption, or telling lie, or bully other, exploit other, do injustice, or killing other, stealing other. No God say that. No religion say that. All major religious traditions say truthful, honest, love, compassion. Even some problems happen. Forgiveness. Never say hatred. You should practice hatred. You should practice violence. You should practice lying. No religious tradition say that. So, one way you believe spirituality, spirituality, worship, pray to God and Goddess almost every day. But then your real life, your, when you carry real life, no concern about the corruption. That's quite a pity. Big contradiction. So I often used to telling my Indian friend, only two choices. Either accept religion, accept God, worship God, pray to God, lead your life honest, truthful, compassionate. Or worship money. Forget God. Worship money and all sorts of dirty things carry without hesitation. Only two choices. If you worship money and lead sort of corrupted life, when you get older and older, you really feel great regret. And your name also may not be uh, a nice name in your friends or your neighbors. Oh, such a person, corrupted person, very bad person. When I think that person die, 
I think everybody feels happy. Now that person now no longer here. Very good. Just a few days ago, you see, I met one uh, uh, Cuban, Cuban, <laughs> one refugee from Cuba, uh, I think 59 or something like that. So very religious minded. So uh, he told me he always pray to God. Please bring these sort of dictators in his country. Please bring to heaven as soon as possible. <laughs> this looks nice, isn't it? <laughs> he dislikes dictators, dictators. But at the same time, you see, respect their own sort of good future. So pray to God, please bring to heaven. <laughs> I think very nice. Uh, so in any way, uh, uh, this nation, in Rasoda, beside these sort of base, are they actually ahimsa, nonviolence, corruption, also form of violence. You truly believe ahimsa, then your life should be honest, should be truthful. So, if you carry this honest life, truthful life, your, sort of, your work can be transparent. That brings respect, trust from, from your community, from concerned people. Then you get genuinely trusted friend come. If you carry some hypocritical way, something hide, telling something different, a hypocritical way, and corruptions, then the very basis of friendship, that's trust, that destroy. So the individual will not be a happy person. More honest way, life. All your life will be much happier, full of self-confidence, full of self-confidence, no basis of, no ground of fear. All the time, your mind calm, happy. So now here, the preventive summary. Preventive. Just a book, okay? Preventive and social no, medicine. Preventive. I think even for physical health, one very important, effective sort of way to prevent illness or getting age rare. Age rare, what is that? Aging. Aging rare. What's that? Aging rare. What's that? I think aging. Huh? I think calm mind. <coughs> calm mind very much based on warm heartedness. So that mental state really uh, important sort of method for preventive uh, illness. Even some problems there with full of sort of self-confidence, calm mind, recover very fast. That much, my own experience, I can, I can tell you like that. So, healthy body, healthy mind. These always go together. Just taking care of your body, taking medicine, uh, with full of anxiety, full of anger, full of suspicion in your mind, very difficult. So you, although you are directly concerned about physical health, but in the meantime, as I mentioned earlier, when you sort of the treatment, treat it right. Treat it, treat it, treat it. The patient, uh, you can practice warm heartedness. And they also, you see, there's possibility, uh, the patient who spend more time in, more longer period in hospital, 
they may also gain some experience, the value of warm-heartedness. So that much I want to, to tell you. So, so with this India sort of basic sort of kasoda strength or sound sort of kasoda, or sort of sound sort of values, then hard work or catching the modernity in every field. So India can be, I think, ancient time, I think, like I think Buddhism, started this country, reached almost the whole Asia. Uh, so, uh, in future, in modern field also, you see, you, Indian, can make significant contribution on this planet. So that I want to tell you. So please, then, then these young people, young Indian, uh, through your hard work, and has to utilize your sort of the great potential of your brain and potential of your heart. I think within this century, later part of this century, I think firstly, India itself internally much developed, externally much developed, can be, I think, good model of the rest of the world. Although I'm now already late 70s, I may not see that. I often used to telling when I talk uh, to some student in America and to some other places, I usually tell them, those young people, you are the generation of 21st century. I am generation of, and you also, I think, almost <laughs> the generation who belongs to 20th century. <laughs> so we are now almost ready to say bye bye. But you, uh, below 30, 20, uh, 15, you are really belongs to the 21st century. So later part of 21st century, I think some sort of positive result from your hard work with wisdom, with vision, healthy vision, right? uh, you, re you really can enjoy you see, that good result. We may not see that, but I often is telling those young students, I may even, even from, hell, from hell or from heaven, I may watch you, whether you are implementing properly or not. <laughs> so, we, <laughs> generation who belongs to, uh, I think here also, you see, <laughs> some, some uh, my, my companions <laughs> who, who belongs to, to the century. So we together, Watch what these young people who belong to the first century are doing. So we'll watch you. If you do not carry properly, then some way we're going to punish you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Is forgiveness more important or punishment? Lastly, Your Holiness. You had mentioned that we sh I'll punish you or the peer group, including myself, will be watching from top and will punish the youngsters who do not perform their duty. My question is, sir, is forgiveness more important or punishing? Punishing the punishment. Forgiveness the means, in spite of some wrong doing, you should not keep ill feeling. Uh, instead, you see, you should feel genuine sense of concern. of those people who are doing wrong things. So then, 
Uh, that is forgiveness practice. Uh, meantime, from genuine sense of concern of their well-being, their future, some appropriate punishment out of sense of concern is very positive action. So no contradiction. Clear. Next question. Sir. Sir, I Now, for, for example, you see, we, in our own case, you see, even though some Chinese, you see, they, on the spot, really, you see, they ordering punished Tibetan, tortured Tibetan. Uh, we deliberately visualize these people and develop a sense of concern of their own future. Of course, from, from the, sort of, what's the, uh, from, from, from spirituality, the spirituality, uh, the concept of karma, those people who actually doing negative, accumulating negative karma. So sooner or later, they have to face this negative consequences. So you see, thinking these lines, we develop sense of concern, sense of compassion, sense of love. And out of that, you see, the, the uh, action level, oh, we, we are opposing their wrongdoing. But mentally, really, emotionally, we really deliberately keep compassion towards these people. So that's no contradiction. Forgiveness, practice of forgiveness, and practice of opposing, no contradiction. Sir, so, I'm- That Dr. also, actually, your philosophy, I always consider Indians as our guru. We Tibetan are chela. I often sit telling my license officer, whenever I greeting him, I, dis I describe him as a Guruji. <laughs> Historically, you are our guru. As I mentioned earlier, since 7th century, 8th century, we carry, study, practice Indian spirituality, Indian philosophy. So, so actually these things are your philosophical view. So it is quite pity. Guru, Indian guru, ask me Indian chela. <laughs> Next question, yes. Yes, sir. <coughs> sir, I am Dr. Rajesh. Godo. Here, this uh, oh, I yes. a faculty member of this institution. It is an overwhelming experience to listen to you in our own institution. People come from world across to visit you at McLeod Gunn. And today I have the opportunity to listen to you in my institution. Thank you. My question is that uh, a person who is not a believer and who is not a disbeliever also. Like, suppose I claim to be a medical teacher who keeps his knowledge updated, who is punctual, who is regular, who is honest, who feels a surge of sympathy on seeing a suffering person, and does, does his duty conscientiously, will he be further helped by a recourse to spirituality? Or is honesty, punctuality, and sympathy towards mankind enough in itself? Question, Not very clear. Oh. Not very clear. Not very clear. Uh, I say, sir, I do everything yes. which is required of a good human being. Yes. Honestly, with compassion, and not ignoring or neglecting my duties. Yes. And I am at peace with myself. Will I be further helped if I take recourse to spirituality in rendering my duties? Will it lead to my mental enhancement? Uh, 
Yes, as a medical profession, right? Uh, uh, your sort of direct sort of responsibility, of course, through uh, uh, through your own profession, sort of, or kind of that, the knowledge uh, and uh, helping them. Uh, at the meantime, as I mentioned earlier, uh, you should keep, uh, you should carry these sort of uh, service, not just uh, a duty or due to salary or like that, or even fame, not thinking that way, but genuine sense of concern of well-being the patient. Yeah. Uh, so already, some uh, kind of, sort of spirituality already there. But spirituality, there are different levels. Uh, one level, without sort of talking about God or uh, karma, or karma, I don't know, difficult. Karma means action, uh, Sanskrit word, action. So any uh, physical action, verbal action, mental action, uh, whether become positive or negative, ultimately depend on motivation. With sincere motivation, the physical action, verbal action, mental action, all become virtuous, right? positive. Uh, so I think now here, I think you also mentioned, I think non-believers. No. Uh, so actually, I think the, 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 the you, you, I think you, you I, I think you mentioned about my three commitment. Oh. The number one, my commitment is promotion of human value. Now here, I usually, you see, made, make clear uh, secular ethics. Secularism, according to Indian sort of understanding, uh, secularism does not mean disrespect to religion, but rather respect to all religions. No preference, this religion, that religion. And also, the Kasa, uh, and also respect non-believer. One time, Advani, uh, I had some sort of, sort of casual sort of talk, and he also, uh, I mean, he mentioned the thousand year old one of Indian tradition is, he mentioned Charvaka, one, one philosophical school of thought, Charvaka, denying God or Dharma, simply uh, existing sort of reality. Uh, so the rest of Indian sort of, sort of the spiritual sort of thinkers always criticize that view, but at the same time refer these Charvaka sort of philosopher uh, refer Rishi. Rishi means sage. So that's the clear sign of respect. Their view uh, argue or criticize. But person who hold that view, respect. So the thousand year old in this country respect non-believer also. So now here, uh, I believe now over seven billion human beings, quite a big portion, actually not much uh, serious about spirituality. These also, human beings, they also, you see, want happy life, but they, once you see, they deny God or religion, they also, completely neglect about inner value. Okay, you remain non-believer. Even criticize religion. Even against religion, okay. But for your personal interest, these moral ethics, moral principle, is for your own well-being. Usually, you see, people have the impression, the concept of love, compassion, forgiveness, that is religious practice, part of religious thing. So when people who have no interest about religion, they also no interest about practice of love and compassion. That's a mistake. Clear. 
So I think one level of spirituality is being, remain honest, truthful, compassionate. Uh, at the same time, remain non-believer. Okay. Then the second level is further develop sort of practice of compassion, forgiveness, these things, with the philosophical sort of reasons. Then, at some level, uh, religion come. Uh, religion also, in religious field, because of that field also, <laughs> theistic religion, except God, creator, absolute. Then non-theistic religion, like Jainism and Buddhism, no concept of God, no concept of creator, but everything due to one's own action, karma. So Buddhism, mainly Buddhism and Jainism, uh, strictly speaking, some kind of non-believer. But believe higher value, deeper value. So in the religious sort of field, two categories. Uh, a theistic religion, non-theistic religion. Both uh, emphasis importance of practice of love, compassion, forgiveness, all these things. So philosophical view, I mean philosophical field, big differences. But all these different philosophy, same purpose to strengthening, to promoting these His Holiness, Tashi Dile. Tashi Do you know what is the meaning yes. of Tashi Dile? Yes. Do you know the meaning? Yes, yes. I know oh, the then word. okay. <laughs> Otherwise, as I mentioned earlier, <laughs> Kazuda, speak that word but without knowing the meaning. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Uh, I'm Associate Professor Shubhra Gupta from Government College, Shapur. My question is body is independent, so is mind. When physical body perishes, does mind also perish along with the body? If not, where does it go? <laughs> I think in this country, last I think uh, almost I think four thousand, or at least three thousand years. You see, uh, investigate about this sort of subject. <laughs> so. Uh, different tradition, you see, uh, uh, find the answer uh, different different way. Right. Now, uh, now here, uh, uh, of course, those people uh, who who believe. You see, God, Creator, and they're very simple. And you see, this very life created by God. Uh, and the, and the end, uh, your spirit, uh, something like, remain dromedary, 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 to shashors. And then, final judgment, either uh, go hell or heaven. <laughs> That's w one thing. Then those Indian religion, including Sangha uh, and all sort of the, sort of the, uh, the ancient Indians of thought, uh, uh, some of them, although you see, believe Brahma, Mahabharma, Re. Uh, Creator, but also you see, accept, believe, uh, believe and accept the life after life. So karma theory also involved. Uh, then Jainism, uh, the Buddhi uh, Buddhism, uh, similar. Then Buddhism and Jainism, as I mentioned earlier, no creator. Our life, no beginning, no end. And there are some different sort of views. So now the basis of uh, after, after death, what happened? Now, uh, except the Buddhism, 
All ancient Indian religion believe Atma is something independent uh, sort of soul, right? being. Uh, so that Atma goes, although the physical function ceases. And with this physical, this certain sort of mind, certain level of mind also ceases. Then Atma is still there. Then Buddhism uh, does not sort of believe the Atma as such permanent oneness, uh, unchanging. That kind of self, Buddhists do not accept. So Buddhist philosophy say Anatma theory. Now question is, uh, what is self? That is the, on the combination of body and mind. Uh, generally, body and mind, a combination of these two things, and then the concept of self, Kasota, uh, uh, designated. Uh, when we say body and mind, there are also many different levels. Grosser level of body, grosser level of mind, like dream body, more subtler body. Uh, so, so similarly, there are different levels of body and mind. So at the time of death, as soon as the heart sort of beat, stop, blood circulation stop. So within a short period, uh, the brain function ceases. So clinically, death. That does not mean the subtle level of body and mind cease. No. Something sort of, one sort of such a rough example like mental state, including the sensorial thing. When we are dreaming, the sensorial consciousness no longer function, but still more subtler level of mind still functioning. At some some cases, even without practice, through or without of training, some I think due to their previous karma or something, the dream body actually can depart from this uh, grosser level of body. I also see uh, few occasions I met such person. So here is a one subtler, uh, more subtler body and with subtler mind. So now, the deepest mind, after sort of brain function, ceases. Clinically, dead. But now already, uh, last 50 years, uh, I think at least, I think uh, 20, 30 cases, who after death, physically remain very, very fresh. And that remain uh, one week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. Now, modern scientists, uh, no answer. Uh, scientifically, so far, no answer. So some scientists, now as a result of our 30 years sort of dialogue or discussion with modern scientists, now, uh, uh, since, uh, since recent years, some scientists now showing interest uh, how it happened. Clinically, clinically dead, but body remains very fresh. What is the factor? So already you see carrying some investigation like that. So perhaps next 10 years, 20 years, may find some scientific sort of explanation. So, uh, in any way, it is fact. So, from Buddhist sort of explanation, is the grosser level of mind completely ceases. That's a debt. Right? That's a debt. That does not mean the subtle mind also ceases. No, subtle mind there. So that is from this body go. Uh, that subtle, very very subtle mind go. Uh, 
the sort of new next sort of destination. Uh, then eventually conceptual way. Conceptual. At the time of Kasa. Conception. So that's the Buddhist sort of philosophical sort of explanation. And also I think they uh, when people uh, give name Atma, but essentially that is the substance. Whether you call Atma or the subtle uh, 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 combination of subtle mind and, and body and mainly the subtle mind. So that's we. So that we call the real sort of identity of self or being, sentient being is that. Clear? <laughs> Next question. Sir, first of all, my sincere as regards to you, sir. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, this yeah, all yeah. in this. I am Pradeep Khanna. I am teaching community medicine in the state of Haryana in our country. Uh, during your discourse, sir, you mentioned honesty. You would bail me out that every one of us would claim to be honest, but we have our own definitions for honesty. We describe the way it suits our convenience. At your wisdom, I would like to know what is the practical possible definition of honesty these days? <laughs> I think uh, these sort of uh, ethical uh, moral principle, moral ethics, uh, the human mind, as you mentioned, very, very sophisticated mind. So we utilize our intelligence, so we uh, create different interpretation. But I think more honest when we deal with cats, dogs, you're really showing genuine sincere, or sincerity, a love, a sense of concern, dogs, cats appreciate. That's honesty. If you sort of different motivation, try to catch or something and give food, they know. <laughs> they may accept the food, but then run away. <laughs> so I think genuine, honest, even animals sort of kasota, kasota, appreciate. So educated, uneducated, wealthier, or poor, everybody, common things showing genuine, because of the truthful, honest. I think mainly it's truthful. That also, I think, our mental function. Indian sort of, uh, the, I said the Indian tradition uh, about mind. Uh, the Pali tradition also. Uh, mentioned a lot of sort of obviously information about mind or emotion, thought. Particularly the Nalanda or Sanskrit tradition, extremely rich, rich. So the mental, like a chemical, one sort of one flower, there are thousands, millions of different chemicals together, then different color, different shape. Different sort of longevity, right? longevity, life, all these smells, all these not come from one sort of entity or one, one particle. Thousands, thousands of different sort of uh, particles combine, then you see these different things that happen. Similarly, our mind, like honest, honesty, also you see is related with many other mental functions. So in any way, I think generally speaking, uh, truthful, uh, transparent, that also very much related with respect other. If you have genuine respect other, genuine concern, then no room to bully, no room to cheat, no room to tell lie. So the ultimate sort of basis or source of honest is genuine love and compassion. Now here, love, the biological factor, 
One level of love is a biological factor. Like dog's mother, you see some certain kind of love towards their own uh, youngster. That's mainly biological. That's biased. That's limited. And very much oriented others' attitude. When I talk, love and compassion is unbiased. So that genuine unbiased love and compassion extend your enemy, as I mentioned earlier. Enemy's action is concerned, negative, we have to oppose. But the being itself, or still a human being, or still a sentient being, must respect, must sort of develop a sense of concern of their well-being. So that's uh, unbiased love, infinite love, not oriented in their attitude, but their being itself, self or being, being, being self. So, so I think honest, so I think generally speaking, any action which brings trust, which brings comfortable in others' mind, that's I think honest, can be said. Anything which develop suspicion or uncomfortable. So in any way, the, the sort of uh, uh, mental level, we have to sort of, uh, we have to judge its own some kind of its own sort of kasota world this mind this thought related with other thought previous thought kasota kasota kurinyama which is simultaneous with it oh. so one thought whether positive or negative we have to judge the previous continuation of that thought and the kasota similar uh, factors at, at the same time. So we have to judge uh, the about sort of moral ethics uh, with uh, full knowledge about map of emotions, map of thought, like that. Then next question. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I am Dr. Heather from Rachi, Jharkhand. Yeah. yeah. Hmm? Um, uh, my question, His Holiness, is that it is human behavior that we are not contented with whatever we have achieved in our life, leading to encro encroaching others' rights and disharmony in society. What is your advice to remain contented and bring peace and harmony in society? I think uh, uh, I, I would like to answer you see, that question on the level of secular ethics. Uh, use our intelligence, the material value. Uh, in any way, there's limitation. Even you owned whole world Firstly, whole India, then eventually whole Asia, then eventually whole world, but still you may not content. <laughs> you want to own moon or Mars. <laughs> uh, it's impossible. Uh, there's a story, an ancient sort of Indian story, one sort of king, you see, he owned, or he already sort of conquer the I think Bharat, I think many parts. Then still, you see, he want more, he want more. <laughs> that kind of story is there. Uh, uh, so the, in the reality, in any case, there is limitation. In that field, much comfortable practice content. Because in any way, you keep greed want more, want more, want more. Sooner or later, you will face disappointment. Clear, certain. Now, mental sort of values, 
no limitation. Like physical, physical thing, like sports, singing, this, this limitation. Mental quality, training, the 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, still you gain more knowledge, more knowledge. No limitation. So things which related with mind, no limitation. Now, more greed in that field, want to more develop, want to more sort of uh, advance. Uh, so, the reality itself, where in any way this limitation in that field, better content. The field where no limitation, then should not content. Discontent, very, because we're very relevant, right? Like that. So usually you see we just opposite. Spiritual, mental development, be contented. <laughs> not much interest, isn't it? The material value, there is, there is a limitation, but we want more and more and more and more. And finally, more disappointment. And only sort of desire, greed. And now some, you see, they, my friend, uh, the economist. So a few years ago, you see, when the global economy crisis uh, uh, start, out of my curiosity, I asked some of my friends, some business, big businessmen, sort of men, right? Uh, I ask you, even in dream, uh, always thinking about money, money, money. You are truly expert. But then, uh, this, nobody wants this kind of, sort of the economic crisis. But uh, ultimately, your own creation. What what is the real causes of that? Out of my curiosity, I ask. Then uh, they say, too much greed. Simply greed, without sort of seeing long-term consequences. That's ignorance. Uh, then also, you see, speculation, without sort of something very certain, but simply according to the, uh, your wish, you see, create certain sort of uh, situation, uh, speculation. Uh, so, so the economic crisis also related with discontentment, uh, not proper sort of knowledge of the reality. Simply, I want more. I want more. Uh, so. Contentment. So contentment, uh, I think realistic sort of thinking, realistic approach. This much I can sort of I can get to it. Then oh, now okay. I have sufficient things. Now okay. Uh, person who have that kind of mental attitude and a person always want more and more and more. I think mental state, the other person who have some contentment, much more calm mind, much more calmer than the other one. Sometimes it's some my friend, again use a business. So I sometimes teasing them, you are a slave of money. <laughs> Just thinking money and they sacrifice their own time, because of their whole time. One time I noticed there's so one Russian, uh, many years ago, in Moscow, one sort of one sort of Russian business. See, see he uh, told me he want to, I mean, he have to go Los Angeles that same day and spend a few hours in Los Angeles, Los, Los, Los Angeles, where? Los Angeles, then immediately return to Moscow. Uh, I felt, such a long trip, and spent for a few hours, and then long trip 
return. I thought uh, there's clear sign of slave for money. <laughs> like that. Is it the wrong view here? Oh, some profit, then they through illusion, right? Illusion, right? Real illusion. They feel, oh, now I got this much money, this much money. Actually, what benefit? Physically or mentally? Nothing. I think content, contentment in such field, yes, I think. But here, individual level, contentment, very relevant. But national level should not feel that way. Discontent. For example, the here, most populated, because I mean, most populated democratic nation, hmm, India should develop. Now, millions and millions of poor Indian. Oh, recent, I think a few days ago, I, uh, I, I heard through BBC, in India, through medical university program, the polio, polio. Almost now, that eradicate survey. Oh, that's really a wonderful, wonderful achievement. So similarly, uh, I think many fields, particularly in the rural area, I think medical facilities still very poor. And also the farming, agriculture, technology in these fields, I think, I think still we need, India needs a lot of sort of development. So the national interest not selfish Indian, but concerned about whole world. India is a healthy nation. So you must sort of got to develop so that you can help more people. So Indian, I think, should think more so wider way. Uh, should not kind of concentrate on your own area. In the so one of my experiences, I participated in a number of sort of, because of the occasion of some meeting. Uh, the, um, I got the impression there very few who speak and with greater vision about world. Quite few. Only think your own area. So now you must look all those great Indian masters, they always talk entire sentient being. So you must think that way. Must, because must develop great vision, like Mahatma Gandhiji and National Mandala. I think they are sort of, because of that, because of they start the because of the concept of ahimsa and implementation, not only for their own nation, but humanity. So you should think right away. I think you have potential to make significant contribution for on, on this kind of, for, for the well-being of the humanity. Good. Thank you. One last question, please. Uh, Your Holiness, uh, I was born in Dharamshala the year you came to Dharamshala. Oh, really? And, oh. Yeah. And I always thought Quite I... Quite lucky then. <laughs> 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 so I, I, I always thought that I grew up with your thoughts and now I work in uh, PGI Chandigarh and uh, the motto there is uh, Art Seva Sarvabhadra Shodhascha, meaning that uh, service of the poor and education for the uh, educational research for the good of humanity. Mm. Uh, recently I went to Bhutan and my question is that what? there you have an indicator, the mm? gross national happiness in Bhutan the indicator of health and of uh, economy is gross national happiness. Would you like to suggest this indicator to our policymakers who are just sitting next to you today to oh. become the same indicator for India? Yes, oh. that's good. But you see, they very easy to say that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> But real development, real materialized is a such sort of state, right? Such sort of community. <laughs> lot, lot of works need education, mainly education. Uh, now this year, I think uh, uh, some Delhi University now with sort of full co 
with Kasoda. Full cooperation, right? I, I think full cooperation. Or, or we already, you see, doing some research work. How to introduce in modern education system about the secular ethics. So last several years, I always see expressing that, and also many educationists in America, in Europe, and also many scientists really sort of uh, realize the existing edu modern education system is something lacking about you see, shaping our emotion or mind. Usually these things you see relying on re religions. Now that now shows limitation. So only ed through education we can transform community or people like that. So education is extremely important. Then economy, also very important. Now this huge gap, rich and poor. Not only morally wrong, but practically also source of problem. At Dharamsala, on small construction in my own area, uh, I asked some of the laborer, they come from Kasashi. Chetiskar, right. They came. Some lady, very poor, and with their children. I think nobody won't leave from their own village. But there's no way, proper way to earn. So they come. So, also very far, and cold climate. The real transformation of India must take place in rural area, not just big cities in Delhi or Hyderabad or uh, in Bombay or Calcutta, Bangalore. No. The rural area must sort of transform, modernize. So through that way, we can reduce this gap, rich and poor. Even big city, number of people, or the streets of children, these people come from village area. Like Europeans, you see, they are facing some problem because of just next other continent, Northern Africa, or Africa, is the economic condition poor. So a lot of immigrate and create trouble. So these big cities also, a lot of poor jobless people come from rural area and population increasing and hygiene also is a problem. Like that. So I think India, we, we really need in order to uh, oh, that that happiness through worship, pray to God, never materialize. <laughs> they, about two, three years ago, one time in uh, Patna, the present chief minister, I know him uh, uh, quite well. So he invited, this is one sort of ceremony, opening ceremony, one this Bihara, Bihara in Patna. So at the function, he mentioned, due to Buddha's blessing, the Bihar state more, rapidly more pros, prosper. He mentioned. Then my turn, uh, talk. And of course, I know the chief minister uh, quite well. So uh, I told him, if your state, uh, rapid sort of pro uh, prosperity uh, through Buddha's blessing, then your state much earlier must develop because the last 2,500 years, Buddha's blessing always there. <laughs> so, so the Buddha's blessing must go through able chief minister's hand, I told him. So that's a fact. So the happy society, 
I think, I think thousand years, Indians always pray, but fail. Buddha, from the Buddhist viewpoint, Buddha say, uh, my so Buddha mentioned my sort of responsibility is to show the guide and the real things uh, in your own effort. It entirely depends on your own effort. Buddha said that. So Buddha said, you are your own master. So our future, the India's future, entirely depends on Indian people. <laughs> So here, yeah, now, education, I think, a key factor. Then development in rural area, again, through education, including technology, knowledge, technology, uh, modernize farm sort of system, uh, and then health. Then gradually, I think, the Kasatiki issues, what do you call it? national happiness, then will come. So the Bhutanese, you see, they uh, wonderful as a Buddhist sort of nation. Uh, very wonderful. But we have to see, also we have to, to see, we wait to see. <laughs> After 10 years, 20 years, we have to see. Unless, you see, these actual sort of thing develop properly. Uh, it's not easy to achieve that. <laughs> That's my view. Thank you.